real life space shuttle was not a perfect spacecraft. Once you recreate space shuttle in Kerbal Space Program, you will start to notice some issues. You know, like uh, it is literal flying brick, it cannot fly in atmosphere, orbital delta v is very limited, shuttle cannot go anywhere else than low carbon orbit, very dependent on fuel distribution and the shift in center of mass during its mission. One can ask, can you actually make a better space shuttle with the same concept? You know, like vertical launch shuttle that can go places and still deliver crew and cargo while returning to a runway on Kerbin. In this video I will be doing exactly that. So there is a number of community run challenges for space shuttle designs. Challenges start with stuff like building a space telescope and a space station in low carbon orbit and challenges continue into the realm of science fiction with the shuttle landed on Mon, Minmus, Duna and even Leith. And here you will need a long range deep space vehicle. After creating an actually stable shuttle or just ASS, I will be flying some community challenges to test its metal. Today I will be creating fuel refinery on Minmus and fuel depot in the low carbon orbit. First we will start with the biggest variable in the shuttle design, payload. This time around I want compact shuttle so I'm using just a single Mark III big cargo bay. I will be pointing it downwards for a good reasons. Yeah, some of you will say that real life heat shielded doors not a thing. Well yeah, it's not a thing since nobody was in a hurry to design like space shuttle that can go deliver payloads to Luna or Mars. But in the end of the day, like landing gear had heat shielded doors on the real shuttle so it had doors with a heat shield, they was just small. Make them bigger, da. Next step is to have an actual heat shielded vehicle. And by heat shield I mean something that can actually shield parts with only 2k temperature limits, you know, like your fuel tanks. This is a long range shuttle and it will be performing like aero brakes and re-entries at 3k meters per second. So yeah, we need that heat shield and 2k temperature limit is no way to go. I am using two 3.75 meter fairings on the both sides of the cargo bay. This way we can go really custom with the fuel tanks, crew cabin and other subsystems. From this point onward I just add the same fuel tanks on the both sides. This way center of mass will always stay in the same place during the whole mission. Also small trick here is to add nose cone as the first part and only attached part to a fairing, then add fairing content from the sides. This way you will kill the aerodynamic drag of the fairing, keeping them in line with the regular shuttle body parts. It becomes a bit tricky once you add some crew quarters in the front. Obviously there is more mass now in the front than in the back. I just have set this with the same amount of mass in the back by installing something like Conrad Reactor uh, blah, 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 I can say it in little bit. <laughs> yeah. In glass, in glass, in glass, por favor, signore. So it will be just convertotron. And obviously other useful stuff in the back and in the front. Just, you know, like uh, make it equal and you are golden. After that I just slap some wings to keep the center of lift behind of center of mass. Wings are relatively easy, just add the right amount of wings, no more, no less. I usually prefer to have enough of wing area to lift vehicle at around like 100 meters per second. This way I can easily lift from places like lathe and landings at KSC becomes way easier. With center of lift I tend to go a bit further back than necessary since in some cases you will want to land with full cargo bay and this can swing the center of mass. Next I slap symmetrical engine cells on the both sides. I do clip several rapers and wish splashes together but honestly only rapers is way more efficient and they are not really that weight in space so if you can avoid wish splashes you know, just go for the pure rapers. I flew challenges in this video with total of like 12 engines, but after reconfiguring wings I was able to cut everything to just like 8 rapers. So yeah, I was flying with like extra what, I don't know, like 8 tons of stuff. Because why not? If you do not really enjoy like this type of clipping, you can just remove fuel from the nacelles and call it like custom engine design. I just prefer to go for the look since, well, drag reduction from this type of clipping is not so beneficial unless you are doing something like an SSTO. But this is shuttle that go vertical under rocket power and sometimes more drag even better because you need to break from like high orbits. So yeah, reducing drag is not always like efficient on the shuttle design. Engine nacelles are really nice to shift this last bit of mass in the exact center of the cargo bay. Also they are really nice to house like air intakes and the landing gear. For the RCS placement I just use uh, fairing base plates because they are round, they are symmetrical, just perfect place to place the RCS. And here comes some OCD where you know like round fairing merges into square cargo bay. But actually this is a, like a legit design where like the shape of hypersonic crafts just compressing the air while pushing the aircraft forward 
yeah this is the actual real design obviously there are a number of other important things but for now i'll just talk about the launch system everything else will be covered while i fly my minmos missions For the launch system I'm using two boosters with 12 vector engines, probably the best engines in the game when you need to launch something with difficult center of mass. I'm not using shuttle engines during the first stage, since well even like 6 rapers is barely much in power of like one vector engine, so I can just add, you know, like more boosters. Uh, and like burning those rapers near fuel tanks, I don't have a great feeling about that. I'm trying to keep center of mass aligned as much as possible with the center of trust, but even if you integrate boosters into the wings, it's still not perfect. Another great rule is to try to burn through boosters all the way up to like 40 kilometers. After this point, vector engines becomes just too powerful for its own good. And below that, you can use control surfaces of the shuttle to offset like unbalanced mass, and at 40 kilometers, you just ditch the boosters and have only balanced shuttle as the second stage. For the boosters I am using dump recovering system. When I fire booster separation I also trigger separation of engine blocks from the fuel tanks. Separation also triggers shoots that will deploy when the pressure is right. Engine block leave the atmosphere for just a brief moment before splashing or landing down. Since it does not have an orbital speed yet, re-entry does not require any heat shield and with the shoots well it's pretty easy just add as much as you need to land safely. Real life shuttle had a and actual boosters that was recovered with the parachutes as well. And actually returning boosters is one of the community challenges. So the first Minmos mission requires us to deliver a pressurized rover to Minmos surface and a couple of satellites to a polar orbit. As you can see I have extra block of nuclear engines on the back and the general rule of thumb uh, for me is to use rapers for everything below like carbon station in orbit and use nuclear engines for everything long range. I just swap around fuel tanks for uh, different mission types. In this mission I'm burning to something like 200 kilometers so I have uh, the actual place to burn my nuclear engines for like 4 minutes and from there obviously I go straight to Minmus. When I arrived at Minmus I ran into some issues with my satellites, I totally have forgot to slap proper antenna on my resource scanning satellite, so I was totally forced to return my satellite back to the shuttle and manually remove antenna from the shuttle to install it on the satellite itself. But well, you know, like over engineering stuff and having like 17k delta v on the satellite is something that allows you to make something like that. So what is the deal with the bottom facing cargo bay? If you go only around Kerbin, there is no real difference. But once you start to land on celestial bodies without an atmosphere, it becomes unnecessarily difficult. I just land the shuttle vertically and drop payloads onto the ground. For that you need like bottom facing engines. So this is why I just swap my engines from the back of my shuttle to a cargo bay when I land. And since I'm using like extra nuclear engines to fly a long range mission, I can just slap like two docking ports on the back of the shuttle and the center of the cargo bay. And obviously this is the best place where this shuttle design is just shine when you like land vertically since your fuel always stays like exactly distributed on the both sides, your center of mass stays in one place. Obviously, obviously there are some issues with the payload balance, but well it can be offset with the actual engineering of the payload into exact like same parts. Also you can just use monopropellant and RCS thrusters to cover your mistakes and also you can use the ore counterweight to offset the balance of the shuttle when you land with the payload and just jettison the actual ore as a counterweight when you go upward without payload. So now you have landed. What you do next? Well just release the payload, drop it on the ground and hop sideways. That's it. Simple as that, just use engines and gravity. And once again this rover is totally over engineered and it's just too powerful for the Minmus servers, uh, probably it's just can go to space from Minmus if you like. Yeah, probably. Or maybe not. I don't know. I, I, I like, I totally forgot to actually transfer my ore from the shuttle to the actual rover, so it should be like twice as heavy. After this mission, it will be actually hauling some extra stuff, so it's actually kind of fine. But for now, it's kind of can barely move around and can host, you know, like five kerbals and stuff and do scans. That's it. Return to Kerbin is uh, rather simple. Nuclear engines, uh, the block itself can be totally recovered in the cargo bay when you land, but I have never actually bothered since I'm just 
well, lazy. So yeah, probably I will be just integrating those nuclear engines into cargo bay, because why not? Obviously, you will lose some flexibility if you will integrate the nuclear engines into shuttle construction, because in some cases you can just leave your nuclear engines in the orbit. For the return from Milmos, I'm using a simple arrow breaking at around 45 kilometers until I have desired orbit. Can go to LKO and wait, can go just straight forward, can use some monoprop and rapiers for the final corrections. Here, during the first Minimus landing, I was pretty close, I have really not a lot of fuel left, but after that everything went very smoothly and this was probably the closest landing that I ever had. Second Minus challenge is to create Minus refinery in free shuttle launches. One module for docking and logistics, one module for drilling and refining ore, and one module for habitation. Habitation? Cabbage? Alright, one module for habitation of four carabels alongside with power generation. All three missions are launched to low carbon orbit of 200 kilometers and after that straight burn to Minmus. After Minmus capture I just wait for right time of Minmus day and land at previously scouted location. For the refinery I went with the train design, this way I can actually easily cover a bit of distance if I land manually quite far away. Other feature is hydraulic lifts to uh, reach the exact height of docking ports of the shuttle and other vehicles and refinery should function during minus might so the solar panels for the most part is just decorative in nature. Five big fuel cells do the main work here and as required by the challenge I have refueled my last shuttle during the minus night. I have tried different return profiles for each single mission but overall general rule of thumb is not to expose too much of the fairing during re-entry from the high orbits. If you have too much fairing surface working at the heat shield you can just overheat very fast. So prograde SAS and multiple IR breaking rounds are your best friends. The last Minos challenge turned to be a rather long one and for the most part is not about shuttles. Uh, first launch was a simple station model with four big docking ports that I have added to an existing station at 400 km orbit. Second launch was probably the, the heaviest launch that this shuttle can do. Uh, the cargo bay have tanker or trawler to move things back and forth between Kerbin and Minmus and it is quite heavy with wet mass around 60 tons. This is low Kerbin orbit launch so instead of nuclear engines on the back shuttle is Following the one extra docking module for my station. Obviously, I attached this module to a station with a tanker while returning shuttle back from the low carbon orbit. Third launch is not a shuttle launch, but honestly, everything inside the fairing can be hauled with the shuttle as well. Since challenge require only one extra launch over five, I have went with this exact setup. Inside the fairing, I have five 40 ton fuel pots. One of them is fully fueled, and uh, four of them is just empty to be refueled at the Minmus refinery. Made a rendezvous with a Anchor and after that burned to a Minmus. And probably this is the point where I totally like became super super duper lazy and started using like MacJab for everything including landings. But well since challenge only require you to money pilot your craft in the atmosphere it's like totally fine. For the Minmus landings I went with a single fuel pod at a time. So over here I basically burned my nuclear engines until the last moment and right right before the ground I just changed the control point of the craft and activate different end of the thrusters while deactivating nukes with the action groups and well pointing you know like retrograde. I call it a shrimp maneuver. I don't know why but now I'm hungry. After a shrimp maneuver I just dock with my refinery. Obviously I'm using one of the docking ports that I have plenty of them. Uh, nothing special with the refueling process uh, and launching is basically the same as landing. It's just shrimp maneuver vice versa. You accelerate to around like 20 meters per second, flip the control point, swap active engines with the action groups and point prograde. That's it. So while I was actually flying all these like five pods back and forward I have some good ideas because yeah too much too much going back and forth and without MacJap you will just go insane but what if you can just split the tanker itself into the four parts you know you have like four pods and four tankers why not Da. Mini tankers have like one Mark 1 lander, two nuclear engines, two maneuvering thrusters, a uh, required amount of fuel with some essentials like batteries, docking port and RTGs. Then just dock one mini tanker with every single four pods and after that dock pods itself through the lateral dual docking ports and call it a day. So in this fashion you can just do the whole refueling challenge in one landing on Minmus and do not spend like two hours of MacJap landings 
back and forth. This is like way, way better, way easier. You just need to fit those like four mini tankers into the shuttle. And mine is just a bit too small to do that. But if you are using like bigger shuttle to deliver stuff to low current orbit, it's totally doable. It's way better and way easier and faster. Uh, why I haven't thought about that before. So my tendon aside, after assembling my tanker back at the high minus orbit, I have refueled the tanker port itself and went back to Kerbin. Definitely have over-engineered like the return delta V. Probably I had enough fuel to even send tanker back to Minmus again after the Kerbin, but instead of that I have just used Megjap and it have eaten like 1.5k of Delta V to rendezvous with my orbital station. Yeah, this is like a lot when you can do everything manually in like 500 meters, especially if you do like a Kerbin Aero break. Docking and redocking was definitely something annoying, but overall it's just time consuming and kinda a challenge in itself, but yeah. Four 40 ton fuel pods have been refueled at Minmus and finally they are delivered to a Kerbin orbit to the refueling depot. So what the actual final round of tweaking revealed for this craft you can actually make uh, proper wings, the wings with the built-in angle of attack to help with the CTO mode on lathe and even carbon. Uh, this craft can totally go on carbon as a CTO. It could not really like lift a lot as a CTO, but it definitely can carry a lot of crew, for example. Otherwise, yes, you definitely need a launch system to launch something like 60 tons in the cargo bay. Uh, so I built in the nuclear engines totally because yeah, I'm just too lazy to actually flip engines around and I was able to build in one more engine so I built in eight engines definitely I need more space in the cargo bay so I extended the cargo bay extra cargo bay segment means more drag so I need more power so for the fully fueled uh, shuttle for 200 tons with everything I need something like 10 to 12 rapier engines to actually push it around as an SSTO on lathe duna and carbon for lathe I can with that much power I can totally just keep close cycle and go straight to the vacuum and circleize with the nuclear engines that are already built in. If I'm going only for like non-atmospheric missions, I don't need rapers at all, uh, except like to land on carbon. To land on carbon for 100 ton shuttle, empty shuttle, you need like four rapers. That's it. You will go subsonic, you will go not fast. You can totally do it. Extra mass, whoosh, eight engines, you will have like extra one kilometer per second of delta V. So yeah, this is the actually stable shuttle. Works like a charm. Love the concept. Uh, we'll fly more of this shuttle later. And you know what? This is the end of the video. Bye! Bye.